Hello again, everybody. Kyle Reese here. Uh, now it's time to go over the first baseman in the organization. Uh, and as a warning, it's a really, really shallow uh, pool depth, really. There isn't a whole lot to get excited about with the current crop of first baseman in the organization. Now, there are some guys who I believe are perfectly suited for a position change uh, to play first base, but they're not there yet. Uh, so we deal with the crop that we have. The first guy on our list, well, first off, there aren't any names that you know on the list. Uh, Luke Voigt, Voigt, Luke Voigt, 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 Luke Voigt uh, would be a name that you know, but he's no longer rookie eligible, so we blow on by him. Uh, in the article, I bring up a really interesting point about him as opposed to Patrick Wisdom on the Cardinals' active roster towards the end of the year. I think it's worth reading, and I think you should give it a quick read, but the gist is that I feel like they wasted and maybe hurt Luke's potential. Uh, when they could have called Patrick Wisdom up in his place. And, you know, Patrick Wisdom's a guy who is already developed. He's not going to get any better. He is what he is. Where Luke had a chance to get better. And instead he sat on the bench. Uh, sounds like a certain catcher I know as well, but uh, we'll move on past that. Our top five first baseman starts with a guy named Stefan Trosclair. Uh, he sounds like a character from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which put him number one on my list, bar none. Uh, the problem with Stefan is that he is a 23-year-old player becoming 24 to start 2018 who was playing at single A Peoria, and he played great. He has a very interesting skill set. He started including power towards the second half of the season. He can play second base, which is really interesting. He's a really athletic, big-bodied guy. Dude looks like a porn star, man. He, he rocks this mustache that you would not believe. He, uh, he Either that or he's a lumberjack. It's one or the other with him, but honestly, he's a pretty good first baseman. And uh, he's going to be really interesting. I hope he starts at Springfield to start the 2018 season. And uh, he brings power. He brings double doubles power. He has a great approach at the plate. It's just a matter of him being confident and not being afraid to take st strikes, really. Uh, he's a little too patient for his own good sometimes, and it wasn't until the second half when he let loose that it really, really showed how good of a hitter he can be. Number two on our list is Juan Yepes, who was the prospect that the Cardinals traded for Matt Adams. And at the time, we all panned it. We hammered the Cardinals for making that trade, even though Matt Adams didn't have a place in the organization. Uh, but Yepes came in, and he wasn't good when they traded for him, and then showed signs of being really good after they traded for him. When they traded for him, he was a third baseman. But for his last 37, 40 games of the season, he played first base almost exclusively, and that's when he really took off. Uh, over that time period that I just mentioned, he slashed 310, 357, 444, and uh, he played a really good first base, all indications are at least. Um, he could be a really interesting guy, and it shows you that a middling prospect like Juan Yepes, uh, if he can be two on the list or even on the list at all, kind of gives you an idea of the lack of depth in the first base position. Number three on our list is a rookie level player by the name of Luis Bandez. Luis, there's a lot of questions. He's probably more of a DH. He's got kind of a weird body. He's not super athletic, but he mashes. It was his second turn in the Appalachian League for Johnson City, and he had 10 home runs. He had uh, 13 doubles. He hits for some power. The question is how much of that power was manufactured from being at a level for the second time, and how much of it is just a 21-year-old maturing into the power. We'll find out in 2018. I would imagine that he jumps State College and goes to Peoria as well. Uh, fourth on our list is uh, a guy I'm a big fan of. He doesn't have much of a major league future, but is John Nagowski. He was drafted in the 34th round uh, by the Oakland Athletics, uh, I think in 2013 or 2014. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but the deal with, with John is that he was released out of their system at the beginning of the year. He signed to play indie ball, did really well in indie ball. The Cardinals scooped him up, and he was great for the Cardinals uh, for the last 200 at-bats of the season. He is a solid first baseman. The problem with John is that he doesn't hit for enough power, or really any power at all, to play first uh, in, in the majors. He'll be fine in Memphis next year, I would assume. He, just a fine prospect there. Uh, but he isn't super athletic at first. He doesn't do, like, phenomenal things over there. He's solid. And uh, he's just a really interesting kid who has a really great story and you root for. He did okay in the uh, the Arizona Fall League, too. He was part of the taxi squad, got a small taste, not a huge taste. I think he uh, only had, like, 32 at-bats. But he held his own. He's a doubles hitter in the minor leagues, and that's a great thing to have in your organization. Uh, fifth on our list is Chris Chinea. 
Chinea played in Palm Beach. That's the Florida State League. That's where hitters go to die. It's a miserable environment of swirling winds and big ballparks, and I can't imagine why anyone in the world would want to play there. The, the best part about playing at Palm Beach, uh, from the Cardinals' perspective, is that that's where most of their instructors are. That's where their home base is. That's Jupiter. That's Roger Dean Stadium. So there's a positive to being there. It's just not a positive from a production in-game standpoint. Uh, there isn't a whole lot to say about Chinea. He played a little catcher. He could probably play a little outfield. He really doesn't do a whole lot. His stats have stayed pretty similar from level to level. He's six home runs and 466 at-bats. He hits a good amount of doubles, 24 doubles. That's worth getting excited about. But, again, he's, he's just kind of a guy. It's a great guy to have in the organization. You can never have enough of that type of guy in the organization. Uh, so he's number five on our list. And then the next man up is a gentleman named Carlos Rodriguez. Uh, I, 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 it's tough because I wanted to highlight someone, but the problem is the first base of depth in the organization is probably where the Cardinals have the least amount of depth. It's probably where they're the lightest. And, uh, man, that's heartbreaking. Now, again, the, 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 we'll get to Carlos Rodriguez before I move on. Carlos is just an interesting guy. He's athletic. He was a battery mate of Luis Bandez. Uh, he's a better first baseman than Bandez. He just doesn't offer much more than that. He's got a prototypical frame. He's 6'2", 6'3", 215, 220 pounds. Uh, but really what we're holding on to with the next man up is for the eventual position change of guys like Walker Robbins, uh, Zach Jackson, and Terry Fuller, whose real first name is Terry A, I believe, which is cool as hell. You gotta like that. You gotta get behind that. Um, but that's where they're at right now. The, the depth at first base is not very good. Uh, and Hopefully by next year, they've they've enriched that area. And uh, that's it for the first baseman. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow when we give you the second baseman. There's a couple guys in that list that I particularly really, really like. And uh, as always, uh, thanks for coming to the Bir Birds on the Black, and uh, happy hunting. <laughs>